Kwasi here. And in today's video, I want to share with you something profound that I've discovered over the last few weeks. Now, after diving deep into works of manifestation, law of attraction, and reality creation, one man keeps standing out in particular, and his name is Jesus Christ. Now, it's not what Jesus said in the Bible that stood out to me in particular, rather what was actually left out from the Bible. There are only a very few who know of this hidden knowledge that Christ entrusted with only one of his disciples in the lost gospel of Thomas. It's debated that this gospel of Thomas was written as early as 100 AD, yet it was only recently discovered 1800 years later in 1945, hidden in a clay jar in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, along with some other ancient texts. This collection of texts was buried and were probably hidden to preserve them from destruction by religious authorities. It got me thinking, why on earth would anyone want to destroy such sacred work? I want you to take a moment to really think about this. If I wanted to hide or destroy something, especially someone's teaching, it must be because this knowledge may empower someone to gain their freedom and I have an ulterior motive or agenda that I want to keep them enslaved in for my personal benefit. You know, I want to maintain some form of control. This is exactly what social media companies are doing to us all the time. Look around you. There are people being silenced on social media, getting quietly cancelled if they get a little too loud with their ideas. Why? Perhaps they're going against some powerful entity's agenda. An entity much more powerful than you or I. This is probably what prompted someone to hide this sacred gospel in a clay jar to prevent it from destruction. Now is the time for you to get empowered and access internal tools that allow you to grow in consciousness rather than getting hooked to social media pills, other destructive habits that they keep forcing upon us. The lost gospel of Thomas has been discussed by many, but truly unveiled by very few, if not nobody. In today's video, what I'm going to share with you is the hidden secrets to reality creation that Christ intended for us all to know, but were locked away for years. What I find to be really interesting about this Gospel of Thomas is how much it contradicts traditional teachings in the Bible. Where traditional teachings in the Bible tell you to look outside and have some God in the sky, the lost Gospel of Thomas actually tells you to turn within. It literally shows us a completely different side to Jesus Christ. And if you read some of these, it, it kind of seems like he's being quite misogynistic. It's like he's being very dark and he's talking about death a lot. So it sounds like he's going completely against it. So a lot of this can be misinterpreted. Maybe that's the reason why they decided to leave it out because to the common man it could be quite confusing. But I believe there was a deeper reason why Christ framed all of these teachings this way. And that's exactly what we're going to get into in this video. What inspired me to recently look into this Gospel of Thomas and the hidden teachings of Christ is uh, watching a Greg Braden video. So Greg Braden did this video uh, where he was doing a seminar, I believe it was in Italy, on the Divine Matrix. And there, it was this four hour long talk. And he was basically discussing how we have all of the tools that we need to communicate with this matrix and shape our realities the way that we want to shape it. And every single ancient culture has been propounding this one core thing, one main principle, but we just have not been able to understand it. And to make his point clearer, he's using this, this lost gospel of Thomas in combination with some of the stuff that's been taken out directly from the Bible that was found in the scrolls of the Nag Hammadi Egypt uh, clay jar and all the other scrolls they found along with it. So what Braden was saying was in the year 325 AD, the Emperor Constantine was faced with some important decisions and he had to basically take out a lot of the stuff from the religious teachings back then. I'm not 100% sure why, and it might be because he had some ulterior motive, maybe he didn't, maybe it was just all too confusing, maybe they wanted to have some form of control. The fact of the matter still remains that a lot of these texts were edited and someone really wanted 
to be biased with the information that was out there. So through centuries, we've only received a certain kind, a certain bias of information. And it's funny to see that all of these interpretations are Jesus saying something, but that's been interpreted by a disciple. And maybe that's why Jesus had 12 disciples instead of one, because one person can be biased, but 12 people can be, uh, they can still be biased, but in many different ways. So Braden was really talking about learning how to communicate with the matrix. Now, after studying this Gospel of Thomas, it was quite enlightening to me because this is something I've been studying for over eight years. And what I've realized is there's, again, these common themes that pop up in every single culture, even from cultures 5,000 years ago, like ancient hermetic teachings. There is, you know, a few key elements to reality creation that really pop up. So what I'm gonna do throughout this video is acknowledge the main quotes, the main sayings in the Gospel of Thomas, and try my best to interpret them and show you why, what it basically means and how you can begin to use it right now in your life. So there's basically three categories, three main themes to reality creation in this lost gospel of Thomas. And what's interesting to see is Jesus Christ, you know, he begins with clarity and the power and the importance of clarity. If you look at saying number two, if you have the lost gospel of Thomas, you can search it up. Jesus said, recognize what is in your sight and that which is hidden from you will become plain to you. For there is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. Take a moment to reflect on this saying. He's basically saying that instead of focusing on what you don't have, focus on what you do have. Instead of focusing on what you don't know, focus on what you do know. Have you ever heard the saying that human beings are afraid of the unknown? Well, that's exactly what Christ is saying here, right? Human beings are afraid of the unknown. So instead of focusing on the unknown and focusing on your fear and strengthening your fear, instead of doing that, learn to focus on what you do know now. And as you move forward in what you do know, the unknown will become visible to you. Throughout my whole life, I've seen this to be true. It's very, very easy for us to, you know, get pulled by what we don't know, what's not clear to us in our worldview right now. Let's say you wanna start up a business, right? And you're thinking about the million different things you don't know, as opposed to the one thing you do know, and you just start up with the one thing you do know and you learn along the way. Well, that's exactly how every single business owner started, right? You have some idea, you have some hunch, something comes up to you and you just act on it. And as you act on it, the unknown starts to become clearer and clearer as well. Have you ever had that happen to you? Whereas if you focus on the unknown, you just become paralyzed. This is the power of clarity. So our whole lives, what we do is we focus on what we're afraid of, avoiding all of the problems. We focus on what we don't want to happen. We focus on what we don't know. And we think that if we keep focusing on all of those things, our problems will get solved. But that is quite the contrary. It's when we focus on what we do know and we act on what is available to us that we actually begin to see things unfold for us, that you know, things actually start to work out for us. To give you another great example of this, when I got started off, I didn't know how to, how I would make money. And I had this dream of getting financial freedom, moving away from my career and doing something that I enjoyed every single day, something that gives me time freedom as well. And I didn't know how to monetize anything then. I thought I was gonna sell merch or something, but then one day I had the idea of starting up a YouTube channel. And I just acted on what I knew at the time. And the more I went all in on YouTube, the more I grew an audience. One day, some woman reached out to me and she was like, hey, I would like to pay you for coaching. And I didn't even know that was a thing. Do people pay for personal development coaching? I couldn't fathom it, right? But all of those was possible because I focused on what I did know instead of what I didn't. So if you feel unclear in your life, the first step to creating what you want is focusing on the knowns and what you can control right now and just let go of what you don't know and trust that in due time, God, the universe, the higher powers will reveal it to you, okay? So that's really important in this Lost Gospel of Thomas saying number two. The other key thing that very well follows along with this is the power of gratitude. In saying number 41, Jesus said, whoever has something in his hand will receive more and whoever has nothing will be deprived of even the little that he has. Please take a moment to reflect on this. The more we are grateful for what we have and we focus on all of the things we have, we get more things that we want. 
the more we focus on the glass half empty, the more we see evidence and proof and reality starts to reflect to us that indeed the glass is half empty. The more we lose things, the more problems come up. This is a very, very deep principle of reality called the mirror principle. Reality is like a mirror that reflects your relationship to it. If your attitude to reality is, my reality is great, everything unfolds quite well for me, life is always taking care of me, then the mirror of reality will just reflect, oh, you believe life is taking care of you? Okay, here you go, more fortunate circumstances, more good things happening. That's why optimists get rewarded rather than pessimists. Have you seen this? Like some, for some reason, optimists always have things working out for them. You know, they always have a good, positive, upbeat attitude. Good things just happen to them. Why? It's because of their attitude and their reflection, their relationship that they have with their realities. I believe this is what Jesus Christ was talking about here. When you focus on what you have and you're grateful, you get more of what you have. When you focus more on what you do not have, you will get more of what you do not have. So in my life, I always become very, very aware of when I'm complaining. What'll happen is, as you start to get stuff, you become attached to stuff, okay? When you become attached to things in your life, you become dependent on it. You start to build dependent relationships on them. And when things don't go the way that you want them to, then you become ungrateful, right? So life, will try to humble you at every single stage to remind you that this too is temporary. That is one lesson you gotta keep in mind. At every single level of my business, as, as I've grown, I've started to get attached. You know, I've started to get attached to making money, I've started to get attached to getting clients, I've started to get attached to getting views on videos, I've started to get attached to all of these things. And every single time I get a little too attached, life throws me a test something breaks. And then when I've gotten to the level where I'm, where I'm humbled and I don't take anything for granted, all of a sudden things fix themselves. I have no idea why this works, but this is how reality, the, the, this matrix of reality creates balance. Greg Braden actually talks about this in his book, uh, The Divine Matrix as well. I was reading it last night and he says how as human beings with our thought and our feeling, we create disturbances. We're creating an inhomogeneity in this field, in the quantum field of nature. If you look at how gravity works, when there's a body with mass that exists in space, it creates an imbalance in the gravitational field of nature. Just like that, when we have thoughts and feelings that are a bit too intense, we create a disturbance. Unfortunately, right now for mankind, the disturbance that we're creating is undesirable. We're attracting negative circumstances in our lives right now because we've been unconsciously conditioned by our environment to be fearful of it all the time. Be fearful of recession, be fearful of losing everything, and we constantly live in fear. That's why we attract more things in our lives that bring us more fear. Have you ever noticed this, by the way? The more fearful you are, the more you keep searching for things that will amplify your fear. That's just how the ego works. The ego just wants to be proven right. It doesn't care about what's good for you. It cares about being right. Because once you understand that the ego is wrong, the ego feels threatened and it's out of business. And please don't misunderstand me. I don't want this to be another woo-woo video about how the ego is so bad for you. It's not. You need the ego at the same time to function in this material reality because the ego is like a shadow, right? You're one way with your parents, you're another way with your siblings, you're another way with your partner. That is the ego. The, the ego forms different identities. The real question is, can you consciously choose what identity you're embodying at every single stage in your life? Are you consciously choosing the thoughts and the feelings that you're feeling and attracting the circumstances that you're attracting? Are you consciously aware of when you're complaining and when you're being ungrateful versus when you are grateful and when you are happy and when you are joyous and you're functioning at the highest level of your intellectual and your emotional capabilities. That is something we want to strive to do every single day. And this is where this saying really comes in handy, right? Whoever has something in his hand will receive more and whoever has nothing will be de deprived of even the little that he has. So that's what I want you to remember that if you don't learn to humble yourself, life will humble you, okay? So you gotta always 
take one saying, one thing you have to remember at all times and it's something that I do. Everything can be taken away from me at any time. When you remember that, it's not that you're living in fear by the way. A lot of people think that you're living in fear. You're gonna live in fear if you take everything for granted. If you think that it's, everything is going to be like this forever. But when you've already gotten to terms with the possibility of defeat, there's nothing else to hold on to. You already accept that failure and defeat can happen. It is going to happen. You are going to fail at some point. You are, you are going to be defeated at some point. What are you gonna do then? Do you have a plan for then? How does life still go on? Seeing in your mind that life does go on. It's funny, I was speaking to one of our mastermind clients and he was saying how before he met his wife, the mother of his children, he went to this landmark um, course, I believe. And in that course, they were teaching him about uh, how to let go of things that you're holding onto. And he, at the time, wanted to meet a partner, right? He'd gone through a lot of relationships and they didn't quite work out. And all of a sudden, there was an exercise that they did where it was like, look at your life when the thing that you want, it doesn't happen and it never happens. So then he thinks about it, he's like, okay, I never get married, I never find that partner. What does life look like? I never have kids, what does life look like? Oh, okay, well, I treat my cousin or my brother's children as my own children. Life goes on. And three months later, literally when he got, when he got that inner sense of full acceptance of whatever happens, three months later, he meets his dream partner, right? He reconnects with someone from his high school and you know they get married shortly after. Now he has two beautiful children. So that's the power of accepting the possibility of defeat in the first place. I talk a lot about this when I talk about coordination and controlling your importance throughout the, throughout the channel. But I think that's one of the most powerful things here. The power of gratitude and always getting to that place of emptiness, having your cup always be empty and not holding on to anything and knowing that everything too will pass, okay? Now the third one, the last one, I believe this is one of the most powerful things, um, one of the most powerful factors, whatever you wanna call it, in this teaching of the Lost Gospel of Thomas. And it directly correlates with how you can shape this matrix to make the desired disturbance and have what you want manifest. This has to do with the unity of heart and mind. What does this mean? Now, every single culture talks about this. There's a yin and the yang. There is the male and the female. There is the achieving of harmony and balance. And so this balance, this unity, is what creates all of these miracles that we see. It's when the heart and the mind come together. In yoga, they talk about the two chakras, right? Your heart chakra and your third eye. When these two come together, you can, you can really make magic happen. Now there's, interestingly, three main sayings in the Gospel of Thomas that directly talk about this. But you have to be very, very subtle to be able to figure it out. However, there is one other edited part from the actual Bible itself uh, that was kind of left out, but Greg Braden was actually talking about this and it's uh, one of the lost prayers. It was edited out, but if you translate it from ancient Aramaic, that's what the emperor Constantine left out. So let's begin with the first saying. Saying number 22, when you make the two one, when you make the inside like the outside and the outside like the inside, then you will enter the kingdom. Saying number 48, Jesus said, if two make peace with each other in this one house, they will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. 106, Jesus said, when you make the two one, you'll become the sons of man. And when you say mountain, move away, it will move away. It's funny how there's so much mention of making the two one. What, what did he mean by that? And, you know, this goes back to that law of balance. Achieving that state of unity, right? So this... This Gospel of Thomas, unlike traditional biblical teachings in the New Testament, Old Testament, actually talks a lot about unity, becoming one. What's interesting to see is that Jesus Christ predicted that mankind will get to a state where we're going to become one-pointed. We're just going to focus on one instead of making the two into one. 
We're, we're not focusing on the two, we're focusing on the one. Look at society right now, it's very mind-centric. It's quite in a state of thinking, being logical, being reasoning, making money, achievement, instead of favoring creativity, works of art, the heart. We failed to make the two into one. When we achieve this unity of our hearts and minds, then we make this powerful disturbance in the field of nature. Please take a moment to reflect on this. When you fear something, whatever it is you fear, it comes to life. Because in fear, our hearts and our minds are becoming one. We fear something, then we think about that thing. We fear bills. We fear something happening to our loved one. We have a nightmare and then we keep thinking about it. It makes it more likely that that thing will happen. And this is because when our thoughts and our hearts come together, they become one. We make an imprint in this divine matrix. We actually shift into that corresponding sector of reality. If you, if you recognize the quantum field as a divine ma matrix, or you can call it the all, there are different possible combinations of realities that can be manifested. I talked about this in my last video. In every single possible combination, this combination is determined by what you're, the thoughts that you're thinking and the feelings that you're feeling. My thoughts and my feelings are largely shaped by who I'm being moment to moment. If I believe myself to, to be a certain kind of quasi, for example, if I believe myself to be a terrible video maker, then I will think the thoughts that a terrible video maker has and I will feel the feelings that a terrible video maker has. Subsequently, I will manifest a particular sector of reality where my videos are bad. On the other hand, if I th feel and think myself, my identity that I'm embodying at this point is that of a successful video maker, then I will think the thoughts of a successful video maker and I'll feel the feelings of a successful video maker and therefore I will become successful. That's why they say, you know, fake it till you make it. Right? Because you're really trying to step into the shoes of someone who you're uncomfortable being. Right now, you may not be your ideal self, but that doesn't mean you can't choose to embody to the best of your ability who that ideal self would be. In every single area of my life where I've seen any form of results, whether this be fitness, whether this be generating a seven-figure business, you know, manifesting wealth, obviously I don't mean to toot my own horn, I just wanted to show you what's possible. In every single area of my life, where all of these things have been possible, it's been possible because I have embodied that version of me. I was able to make an imprint in the matrix, right? An imprint and make that shift to that parallel reality, to make a quantum shift happen where I became that person who does that. It became natural for me to go to the gym and lift weights. It became natural for me to wake up early. I am the kind of person who wakes up early. My self image changed. A lot of people talk about this, like in psychocybernetics, they talk about the self image, about how when people started to get plastic surgery, they imagined themselves to be a certain person and that's who they became. When I was a kid, I had crooked teeth. I visualized, I saw myself as being a certain person with crooked teeth and I saw myself being someone else completely different, more confident, more powerful when I had straighter teeth. As soon as I got my teeth straightened and my braces got taken off, I literally became that person overnight. That's what happens if you can consciously shift your identity. So that's the power of aligning your heart and mind. Now, another crucial piece to this was the piece that was taken out of the Bible. And it was John 16, 23 to 24. This was taken out. This was in ancient Aramaic. All things that you ask straightly and directly from inside my name, you shall be given. So far, you have not done this. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire that your gladness be full. There are three main parts to this. The first part is ask straightly and directly. What this means is ask by focusing directly on what is wanted rather than what is unwanted. Most of mankind is focused on what is not wanted. Oh, I want a business because I want to get away from my job. Oh, I want to be successful in this because I want to get away from that. I want to solve this problem because I want to get away from that. Instead of directly focusing on the thing that they want to move towards, most of their time is spent complaining on what is unwanted. Again, it's the first two things that we're talking about, clarity, right? You need a clear picture and a clear purpose of what you want to move towards. The second part is ask without hidden motive. Ask without judgment. 
right? That's what it basically means. Do not judge what you want. Do not say that it is possible or not possible. That is not up to you. Have no hidden motive or no judgment. Whatever it is you want, go and freely ask for it. And when you do that, you're not bounded by anything. You're not closed off. You're open to receiving. When you have a judgment, please think about this. When I have a judgment about something, I'm immediately becoming closed off. Look at what happens to my energy when I judge something. If I say something is good or bad, I'm already taking on a positionality. If I take on a positionality, I am less likely to receive that thing, right? Because I become closed off. I am judging it. By becoming judging, you become closed off. By becoming perceptive and open, you become open. Simple. The third part of this is be enveloped by what you desire that your gladness be full. This is something that Neville Goddard talks about quite a lot. If you know Neville Goddard, then you know what I'm talking about. Neville Goddard primarily talks about the law of assumption. So Neville is this, uh, this philosopher in the 19, I believe it was the 1900s, who talks about the law of assumption and the feeling of the wish fulfilled. I've made tons of videos on Neville. And what Neville pretty much says is, you've got to operate from the end state, right? Which is what? Which is the identity that we've been talking about. When you embody that ideal self that you will be once you have everything and you embody that version of yourself now, you become completely immersed and enveloped in those thoughts and feelings. You make that imprint in the matrix. Do you not? That's exactly what we're doing. When I began wanting something, I would just visualize it without feeling it. I would just look at a picture of it. And that was never effective. But as soon as I started to feel what it would be like to be that quasi in that ideal state, I started to see movement happen in my life. For the example of me having a business, you know, going back to making YouTube videos. Before I started to make YouTube videos, I was thinking about and visualizing something that would give me freedom. I was thinking and feeling from the end state of what it likes to wake up in my mansion in LA next to the woman of my dreams. That's before I had any of this. That's before I, I met the woman of my dreams. That's before I lived in that mansion. I was thinking and feeling all of these things and operating from that end state. And slowly but surely, ideas started to come to me and I started to act on those ideas. And when I acted on those ideas and lived in alignment with my true self, more feedback started to come. So the key thing that you really got to take away from this is operating from that end state of being. Instead of just incessantly focusing on doing or having something, ask, who am I being when I do have this, when I am doing what I want? How can I closely embody that state of being right now in this moment? This comes down to consciously embodying at every single stage in your life, who you must be in order to achieve and experience that reality you would like to experience, okay? The last bit that I want to leave you off with is the mirror principle. We briefly discussed this in number two, but I honestly believe this is one of the most powerful things you can do. Learning to shape the reflection in the mirror with your mind and your heart. I've actually made a comprehensive video on this. You can click right here to check it out. Learning the mirror principle was one of the most powerful things for me, okay? And I'm not just trying to sell you on another video, but the key thing about the mirror principle is learning that reality is a reflection and the subtle ways in which this mirror works because there is a delay to the mirror of reality and what you must do during these periods of delays because things aren't always gonna go your way. How to properly coordinate through these delays, how to have your attitude right at all times. Out of a thousand clients, over a thousand clients that we've worked with, every single one of them talk about this one thing, the mirror principle and learning how to confirm and coordinate through the whole journey. So click right here to check it out and I'm gonna see you in the next video right now. Thanks.